Hello everybody, this is Johannes Tyrannus and I want to talk about the energy crisis, which is a complete hoax. At first you would think that it's caused by the total incompetence of the European leadership and the North American leadership, the Western leadership in general, but it's not. It's deliberate. How do I get to that? Well, well imagine you are European or Western elite and for 500 years you have been exploiting other people's lands for resources. That's what colonialism was about. It was about fetching the, the, the resources, the iron, the ore, the, you know, the, the gold and the diamond and the oil and the gas from other territories. But now we have arrived in a time where Western elites, who have grown so accustomed to their ostentatious lifestyles, but they can no longer get the wealth that they want from the world, except for one more place they control. And that place is their own homeland, where a middle class, a white European middle class or American middle class still owns a lot of resources, a lot of wealth, a lot of money. And do you see where I'm getting at? Our elites are going to cut the fat, so to speak. They're going to digest the middle classes so that they can stay rich for some time uh, while basically our civilization collapses. And what's this got to do with the energy crisis? The energy crisis is that the control of energy is basically what gives states power. If you control the oil, control, that's about control. It's not necessarily about possessing the oil. For example, a small country like Venezuela may, con may possess a lot of oil, but the United States controls a lot of the sale of the oil. So it's about control, not possession. You may have heard one or the other politician tell you that if you don't like the rising gas prices for your car, then just buy an electric car. <laughs> First of all, who has the money to buy an electric car? The baby boomer generation. They have savings, they have the money to buy these expensive cars. But that's not even the issue. The issue is that uh, rising gas prices uh, will not be solved by driving electric. <laughs> that's because in, you know, in North America, for example, uh, where does electricity come from? Most of the electricity generated in North America and in Europe comes from burning fossil fuels. Oil, gas, coal, wood, biomass. Uh, if the price of oil goes up, the price of gas goes up due to the uh, Russia-Ukraine conflict, then the price of electricity generated using these fuels will also go up. <laughs> so when Elon Musk, the CEO of Tesla, tells you that uh, European and North American nations need to reboot their uh, nuclear facilities, especially Germany, which has shut them all down by now because they thought they were going to switch to solar and wind. <laughs> that never worked out because uh, solar is unstable and the electricity grid in Europe cannot really handle this instability. Uh, anyway, so Elon Musk says we need to uh, uh, flow more oil from the oil reserves in the United States, for example, to lower the oil price. And he says, uh, well, this is a bad thing for Tesla because, uh, well, he, he wants you to believe that lower oil prices somehow mean that uh, people are going to keep driving gas-powered cars or diesel-powered engines. And this isn't true. Uh, that's because electricity itself is generated mostly, as I told you, by burning fossil fuels. So a low, uh, a high oil price, which is the case today, also hurts people who want to charge their Teslas. I'm in Sweden right now, and uh, barely a month ago, there was a whole story in the newspapers here. What had happened is that uh, electricity prices had almost five-folded or ten-folded in price. Uh, it became so bad, electricity became so expensive that Swedish farmers who run a, a greenhouse, for example, that they used to heat with electricity, they switched to diesel engines, diesel, diesel aggregates to fuel their greenhouses, to keep their greenhouses warm. Uh, because the electricity was so expensive, um, some top pundits in Sweden even, uh, journalists and, and TV personalities, they even started saying that we should start considering electricity a luxury good. Can you imagine that? How are you supposed to drive a Tesla car in a country like Sweden if electricity is, a, is now a luxury good and that it's going to become more and more expensive, just like oil and gas are? At this point, you might think, how come our Western leaders didn't foresee all of this? Didn't they know there was a conflict with Russia? Didn't they know that Saudi Arabia doesn't really like the West and they want to, you know, mess with our economies by maybe raising the prices? Uh, yeah, they did see all that coming, they also realize that there's nothing they can really do about it. The whole go green, go electric movement is a scam. 
uh, if you haven't figured this out yet, buying an electric car, um, they say it's better for the environment, right? Why? Because an electric car itself does not exhaust fumes. So at least in your neighborhood, in your street, within city streets, you won't notice the fumes coming from these cars, and they're also a lot quieter. So there is some immediate local benefit. However, because electricity is still generated using fossil fuels by burning them, uh, the fumes are produced elsewhere in major massive factories that are just not in your street. So using this little trick, it's like a psychological trick, they can convince consumers that if you go electric, it's better for the environment. And the consumer looks at the car and says, indeed, there's no fume, fumes coming from the car, so it's better for the environment, but not really. Locally, yes, in your street, yes, but globally speaking, it doesn't change anything. The whole go green, go electric movement is a trick to get people to sell off their old diesel and gas powered cars and engines and switch to a brand new expensive electric car. It's a marketing stunt to get you to get, especially to get the boomer class, the middle class that still has wealth and other people in the middle class who still have money to get them to buy the latest, the latest gadget. Imagine people buying a Tesla car as often as they buy a new iPhone. Well, that's the point, see? And there's another reason why they want you to go electric, and that's control. Imagine tweeting the wrong thing, and then Tesla bans your car. You're not allowed to drive it anymore. They switch it off remotely. There have been calls on Twitter that Elon Musk has not yet responded to. He hasn't done it yet. But basically, people asked him, could you please switch off the Tesla cars in Russia so that people, consumers in Russia who bought one can no longer drive them? Imagine how crazy that is, that you're, you're involved in a war with the Russian army, but you're going to shut down consumer cars in Russia because you want to get back at their consumers for some reason. So it's about control. If they can remotely switch off your car, they can remotely switch off everything because they can cut off your electricity. Imagine in the future you will be able to get your electricity using your ID, your digital ID. So every time you plug something into a socket, the government knows it's you. It's you plugging it in. Your identity is transferred electronically. So they can determine who is allowed to charge a phone, who is allowed to use a washing machine, who is allowed to drive a car. So Europe's or the West's energy crisis is perfectly deliberate. It was planned. Uh, the politicians performing these acts, they look incompetent to us, but they are following uh, their own master's lead. The, the people we get to see on TV, they are puppets. They're not really in charge. Unlike, say, in Russia, where Putin is definitely in charge. And in Saudi Arabia, you have these uh, dynasties, these families, Arab families, who are actually in charge of their oil system. And they also provide the princes and the kings that rule the kingdom. Not so in the West. In the West, our politicians have, be, uh, have been demoted to the, to the status of actors. They're scripted actors, script-fed actors. This is the reason why all these politicians across the West can speak the exact same words on TV in different languages, but they say the same things to the people. It's all controlled from above. Now, if we take a step back to see the bigger picture, um, I would like to talk about the, the future of the West in terms of this energy crisis. Did you know, for example, uh, you notice the trees behind me, I'm in a forest here. Uh, did you know that if Europe had to heat its homes and if Europeans had to cook their food by burning wood, the wood they can chop themselves, only about 30 to 50 million Europeans would be able to live in Europe. We have almost 600 million people living in the European continent today. That includes the European Union plus the other nations such as Ukraine and uh, Belarus, who are also part of the continent. What happens if we had a total breakdown of our energy household? then over 500 million people would have to leave Europe and they would have to find refuge elsewhere. You see, just because our politicians are controlled by their puppet masters who believe in a certain ideological vision of the future, that doesn't mean that future is going to come true. Something unexpected always happens on the way to the future. And it is simply not true that our great grand ideologues, uh, Klaus Schwab, I don't think he even is uh, in charge of anything, his masters, the masters of Klaus Schwab, whoever controlled him, they're stupid. They don't have high IQs. They have low scruples. They simply play God. They think they're in charge. 
and to, and, it, and to some extent they are in charge because they mostly control our media. But what they're not in charge of is the unexpected things that might happen. And here the common people can play a decisive role. We can make unexpected things happen to our benefit, but to the detriment of our so-called phony fake elites. In the grand scheme of things, a people can only survive if it manages to acquire the resources it needs to survive. Food and water and energy to cook and to heat your homes. Technically speaking, this means Scandinavian people are better off than uh, other Europeans further south, because the Scandinavians, like Sweden, is still 60 to 70 percent woodlands. In case of an economic breakdown, they might not be able to drive their Teslas or their cars, but they'll still be able to heat themselves and cook food by chopping down trees. In mainland Europe, it's a very different story. Uh, London, Paris, Berlin, Amsterdam area, these are such highly populated areas. If an economic crisis hits there, tens of millions of people are going to have to run. And to be very realistic with you, it looks like Russia is being backed by China. You know, every time a Western company is cutting itself out of Russia, the Chinese step in and they simply take over what the Americans and Europeans dumped there. Uh, it also seems to look like countries like Pakistan and possibly India and even Mexico are supporting Russia. And it also looks like that the Saudis are reconsidering their position if they want to sell their oil to America or if maybe they want to sell it to China. There is a very likely possibility that the enemies of the American empire, whether you like it or not, India, Iran, Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, the Arab states, China, Russia, North Korea, that they are going to work together to gang up on the West by cutting our energy supplies. Mind you, Europe itself doesn't have much oil. There's Norwegian oil, but it's very expensive to extract it from the sea. Uh, that means you could still drive a car, but it will be ludicrously expensive and it will become, the car will become a luxury item. My advice here is prepare for it. Prepare for a world, a Western world, European, North American world, where you will no longer be able to drive a car. This is no joke because solar and wind are not going to solve this problem. Nuclear isn't going to do it. And our own elites will first cut the fat. They will first digest the middle class's wealth. That means our people's wealth before they even think of giving a damn about us. Our elites are here for their survival, not ours. They use the people as a vehicle for their children's future. And if they have to sap the blood from our children, they will. That means we're on our own. We're on our own and we're going to take care of ourselves.